Yo, 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 what's up? Um, y'all, I mean, if y'all watching this channel, I'm sure y'all know who I am. Um, I haven't done this in a minute. I know it says Pavi's daily takes, and on the thing, it's Pavi's weekly takes, but um, yeah, man, uh, you know, I'm starting this back up. Um, you know, I know y'all haven't heard from me probably since what was it like uh, a little bit after free agency, I think it was. Um, but yeah, I'm starting this back up. Like I said, I'm gonna do a weekly, I'm not, I'm not doing daily, I'm not gonna hop online every single day and talk about uh, what's going on in the NBA. But I'm going to definitely hop on weekly. I'm going to make sure that, you know, on Friday mornings, um, you know, y'all have my take on things for the week um, and what I've seen for the week. So, uh, yeah, I hope y'all enjoy it. Like I said, it'll be a weekly thing. You'll see it on Friday mornings. Um, so I hope y'all enjoy it. And that being said, I guess we can get into it, man. Obviously, first week of the NBA season is always a really, 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 really exciting time for everybody involved. Um, you know, uh, you know, like a lot going on, um, the excitement, um, you know, the opening night games obviously was Lakers, Timberwolves, and then it was Celtics, Knicks. I actually didn't see Celtics, Knicks. I know the Celtics beat the hell out the Knicks. Um, I've been seeing the Mikhail Bridges, Ben Laden meme going around, which was like, yo, that's one of the main things I miss about NBA Twitter when the NBA isn't going on. Some of the memes that people create are genuinely hilarious. That Mikael Bridges meme is hilarious. Um, but I do want to talk about the Celtics, man. Like, um, I don't know if y'all saw me on Scott's show. Uh, I'm not going to hold you, but I feel like we haven't seen a championship team that still has, quote-unquote, so much to prove um, since maybe the 14-15 uh, Warriors. And obviously you see what happened the next year with the 14-15 Warriors. They went 73-9. and But I think the Celtics team, in the eyes of many, because of how they won, you know, I think people think that they got, quote-unquote, an easy role. They didn't have to play the Bucks. They didn't have to run into the Sixers. Like, they ran and they, you know, did Cavs. Um, you know, they did Pacers. Like, because of how they won, um, I think that people think that, you know, they kind of had, like, an easy role. But at the same time, you got to be who's in front of you. And they beat everybody who was in front of them. Um, but I still think they have, like, just – you know, um, a lot to prove this season. You know, obviously, with the way Team USA went for Jason Tatum, um, not being able to get on the court. Granted, I know it was LeBron and KD playing in front of him, but as Jason Tatum, you know, uh, arguably a top five player in the league coming off a championship, you would think that your coach would find minutes for you in Team USA. You couldn't do that. Jalen Brown didn't even get a call. They called me his teammate, Derek White, but Jalen Brown couldn't even get a call for Team USA. Um, so I think that this Boston Celtics team still has a lot to prove. And even with, you know, the uh, Knicks being constructed um, as they were this offseason, I think that, you know, a lot of people kind of was reaching at the shiny new thing, which was the New York Knicks. Like, oh, yeah, the Knicks coming out the conference. Um, and I think the Celtics wanted to come out and make a statement. Like, nah, we are still the defending champs. We won last year. We won, what was it, 64 games, something like, something like that last year. Um, and again, if I had like looking at it right now, if I had to pick a favorite, like I said, if I had, if I had to pick a favorite right now, looking at it, I don't see how you don't pick the Boston Celtics. Um, you know, obviously Al Horford is like a year older. I think that at some point in time, Al Horford will probably take a step back. Uh, you know, Porzingis is coming back at some point. I think they were saying January for Porzingis. I think I haven't looked, I don't know, but I think people were saying January for, um, Porzingis, but at the end of the day, man, like they wrapped up everybody. They gave them contracts. Drew Howard, they got a deal. Derek White has a deal. Um, you know, Brown is extended. Tatum is extended. KP got his um, thing as well. So I think this is the team that, like, like look, I know three-piece are a very, very rare thing in sports, right? Very, very rare thing in sports. But I think the Boston Celtics have a real chance to three-peat. I'm sorry. Like, you know, I like when I look – excuse me, at this team, and I look at the ages of everybody, like, I mean, obviously, you know, like I said, Horford is older, so you're probably going to have to find a replacement for Al Horford at some point in time, because I would assume at some point in time he's going to take a step back and and just not be what he um, even is right now. Obviously, he's not the um, 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 ATL Al Horford, if some of you guys remember that, but he won't even be what he, you know, um, once was, but like when I look at the eggs of these guys, I mean, I don't think holiday slowing down no time soon. Like KP, the real, the main thing is really health. Like he's seven three, and he's not even. I don't is is KP thirty years old? I'm not sure. Let me look real quick. Is Chris Tapps thirty years old? Um, 
Christoph Porzingis is 29 years old, so he'll be 30 this year, I think. When's his birthday? KP's birthday is... Oh, no, no. KP's birthday is in August, so he just turned 29. So he's like this... Most of this roster, as far as your main guys, aren't even 30 years old yet. Like, let's look at the age of the guys. Um, also, roster this year... Um, Let's see, yeah, Jalen Brown, 28, Jason Tatum, 26, Derek White is just now 30, Peyton Pritchard, 27, Sam Hauser, 27, Holiday is 34, so obviously, you know what I'm saying, like, obviously he's an older guy, but I think for what Holiday, I, I think that everybody's age is um, coinciding with their main guy's prime, and I think everything revolves around Tatum and Brown, and again, I think that those, even Jason Tatum, like, I think he's, I don't think Jason Tatum is in his prime yet. I look at Tatum like, that's a guy who still has, a lot of getting better that I think that he can still do. You know, I think he can improve his percentages. I would love to see him get above, you know, 50, well, get around, get about 50% from the field. I would love, um, you know, if he could utilize his size more and stop settling as much as I think Jason Tatum settles. I mean, granted, they won a championship doing it, so forget what I'm saying. I think they took, what, 60? They took mad threes in the first game against the Knicks. I'm not sure the numbers. So, like, they figuring out the way that they figured it out. Um, but I think that all these guys can get better. And the coach. The coach, man, Joe Missoula. I think he's a really – I think Missoula is a really good coach. And, um, yeah, I think that maybe, you know, uh, um, um, the first year, you know, I think you look at, you know, he kind of got outcoached by Eric Spolster and things. But this year in the championship run, and I thought Missoula did a, did, a, did a great job. And also he's a guy – just like players can grow, coaches can grow. And he's a guy that, can, that will continue to grow into his own. The players respond to him. So when I look at this, like I said, when I look at this Boston Celtics team, I think this is the team that if I had to put – I'm not a betting man, but if I had to put money on somebody to win anything this season as in the championship, I'm still betting the Boston Celtics. I really can't bet against this team. And, again, I think that, you know, uh, there's the start of their title defense obviously started when they beat the Knicks. And I think that they wanted to come out and show that, you know, with all the talk about the Knicks and everything else, like, nah, we still them dogs. We still the uh, top dogs out here, and y'all got to go through us to win anything y'all got to go through us and like i said i don't think you've seen a championship team more disrespected than what the celtics um were this summer since you know probably the warriors when you know uh Kyrie was hurt and love was hurt and we was like oh yeah they won but like whatever so uh yeah man when i look at the celtics like i said if i had to put my money on somebody i'm going boston but moving on i want to talk about the los angeles lakers um, so many interesting things in that game, but mainly I want to talk about JJ Reddick. Um, obviously, no prior coaching experience. He did the podcast with Brian and Ham gets fired and he pops up as the coach of the Lakers. But I must say, JJ Reddick, because I was on, I, I think I was on board in saying, um, um, you know, I don't know if he's gonna be actually running the shit that he was drawing up with Brian on the pod, but he was actually running some of the stuff he was driving up with Braun on the pod. Like, I must say, like, you know, the way that, and, and and I love the fact that they actually played through Anthony Davis, which at this stage, if the Lakers want to be successful, I think it's time fully for AD to take that step and, like, be the unquestionable best player on this basketball team. But for that to happen, you got to play through Anthony Davis. Even when he was getting the ball at, you know, I saw a lot of times, a lot of, like, um, High post ISOs, free throw line ISOs for Anthony Davis. That's where you want AD to get the ball at. Um, and even just the ball movement that the Lakers had that we haven't seen in previous years from this basketball team. Um, and again, JJ Reddick seems like he has a really well, obviously through the pod, seems like he has a really good understanding of how to run offense. Um, he seems like he's obsessed with the game. Um, obviously, you know, to, to not have, I mean, I'm not, I mean, obviously he was in the NBA, so I'm not gonna say he, you know, wasn't a good athlete, but he doesn't have he didn't have elite level athletic ability so for him to last as long as he did in the game you got to use your iq you got to use your smarts and i think that's something that jj reddick is doing did very well as a player and i think that he would do that also as well as a coach and i think he has a chance man to be to 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 you know be legendary um because, yeah, when I look at this Lakers team again, like, I think it's a solid basketball team. I'm not picking them to win no championship. I think probably the ceiling for this team is maybe second round. But, again, if all goes well, you know, and uh, guys can stay healthy, guys can improve. Um, I like the connect rookie, uh, as Snoop calls him, Westside Connect. I like him. 
Uh, you know, he adds some shooting. If, you know, D'Lo can bring his shooting back, uh, Austin can shoot. You know what I'm saying? So, like, they they have some guys who can shoot. I know a point was Reddick wants to um, be able to get more threes up this year. So, and again, if Bron can stay healthy and if Anthony Davis, mainly if Anthony Davis can stay healthy, I think this could be a team that could be 45, 47 wins and be a second round team, but maybe they can do more. Who knows? You know, who knows? Like, if AD plays the way AD played in that game, I think this could be AD's. I'm not going to say he would win an MVP because I think that other people will probably put up maybe a little bit of a better stat line. But I do think AD can be a top three MVP voting. If he going to play the way he played against the Timberwolves every single night this year, especially when it seems like Braun kind of taking a back seat. Granted, it was game one. You know, they could lose the next 81 games or, the you know, maybe they don't play through 80. Maybe everything that we saw in game one is just what we saw in game one and we don't see it ever again. But if that's what we're going to see all year and that's Anthony Davis that we're getting, this could be Anthony Davis' MVP, uh, his, his MVP campaign year. If that's the guy that we're going to get all year. And I do believe that and I do think that. So and the Timberwolves, moving on to the Timberwolves, um, granted, it was one game. Um, they made the trade very, very late. Very, 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 very late in the season. Um, well, not in the season, but very, very late in the off season. So, you know, just no real camaraderie. I think Randall was still trying to figure it out. Um, I think that he can bring, you know, something. I think he, I think as he goes, he'll figure out what his role is. It also wouldn't shock me if he doesn't figure out what his role is and he's on a different team come All Star break. Um, so that wouldn't shock me at all either. But I think he'll figure out what his what his own role is. But I would like to see the rookies play. I would like to see Rob Dillingham play. Like, I think that he could bring an uh, added spark offensively to this team. Um, I loved what I saw from Dante DiVincenzo. Obviously, Rudy is going to be Rudy. I know people make jokes about Rudy, but Rudy is one of the best defenders of the past 20 years that we've seen in the NBA. Rudy is going to be Rudy. I do – I would love to see – I think Ant's going to have a lot more playmaking responsibilities this season. Um, I wonder how that's going to go. So I would love to see um, Ant just take a step with his playmaking. You know, and I think last year Ant averaged about like six assists, which wasn't bad. I'm not saying he can't play make, but I think that he can make better decisions with the basketball. Like even um, going back to it, going going back to last year in the playoffs when uh, Luka hit the shot, I was re I was watching the replay when I was getting my hair cut a couple days ago, and I forgot that Anthony Edwards turned the ball over that even led to that. You know what I'm saying? So I think that Anthony Edwards' decision making can get better, and I think that this year it will have to get better. Um, Conley's a year older. Um, obviously, Conley's probably going at some point in time. You know, Conley going to probably miss 15, 20 games, and they don't really have another point guard on the roster for real. So. He's kind of going to be the guy who's tasked with setting up the offense a lot. So he's going to have to also look to get his, but also look to get everybody else involved. Um, so I would like, again, I would like to see him take a step in that. Like I would like to see him be more around like 6.5, seven assists um, this season, because again, he just might have to do that for this team to go where they want to go. There's going to be a lot on him. Um, and again, I think he has to take that next step. Like granted, I know, you know, we looked at what Ant did last year. And people call him the new Michael Jordan. I'm not going to go that far. I like what Ant did. But at the same time, I do still think Ant has to – there is there is another level for Anthony Edwards, and I think that level for Anthony Edwards is mostly based off IQ, and that's something that will come, you know, with time. I mean, he's only, what, four or five years pro, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, But, yeah, you know, so 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 uh, he'll figure it out. Um, He'll continue to grow, but – yeah, for this Timberwolves team to go where they want to go, I think Anthony Edwards has to become a better playmaker um, for sure. So, And other teams, moving on, other teams that I'm excited about, one team I do really want to talk about is the San Antonio Spurs. I want to talk about the Spurs because I have a take. Um, I've ex- I, have, I, have ex- I have expressed this take. But I'm sold on this thing. I think the Spurs could be a playing team this year. I don't really see why not. Um, I don't think the Spurs are as bad as people think they are. I think the Spurs are – I don't think they're a 
I don't I don't think they were obviously they're not a great team, but I think they're much better than what people have given them credit credit for over the past couple of years. I think over the past couple of years, Greg Popovich has been doing everything he possibly can to lose basketball games. He's been putting the Spurs at a competitive disadvantage for about two, three years now. And again, if Wimby is who we think he is, why can't they be a play in team? Like we talk about it. I like I think Wimby should be an MVP. Um, MVP consideration this season. Why not? We got people running away from the man at the rim. I think the man could probably win defensive player of the uh um um of the um year this year. I don't see why not. I think he could average three, four blocks a game, get you 10 boards, get you 24 points, get you a steal. If you doing all that and you that good and you that guy, you the next generational guy, I think they should be a play-in team. You got Stefan Castle, who I think could win rookie of the year. Um, uh, Jeremy Scohan, not not at Sohan, not, not they not trying to put the man at point guard, which was malpractice. That see, putting Jeremy Sohan at point guard is what I mean by like you're trying not to win basketball games. I'm not thinking Greg Popovich with all the great basketball he's coached, all the Hall of Famers he's coached. You've coached Avery Johnson, you've coached Tony Parker, you've been coaching in the league since 1996. I'm not believing that Greg Popovich was going to practice and actually thought Jeremy Sohan could play point guard. I'm not believing that. You bring in Chris Paul. Um, again, you still got uh, Devin Vassell, uh, Vassell. I know I think he's hurt right now, but obviously he'll be back. You bring in Harrison Barnes. You have a veteran. You still have Zach Collins, who I don't think is a starting center, but he's a solid center um, in the um, league. You still have Keldon Johnson. Like This team, to me, can be, can be a team that wins 43, 45 games. I don't see why not. If you're trying to win basketball games, as long as Wimby can you know, stay healthy and stay on the court and get you 70 games, and plays 70 games, I think this could be a play-in team. I honestly do. And if they weren't a play-in team, I would personally be disappointed. Um, because, again, like, with all these tall guys, you have to wonder about, you know, their health and um, um, their, their health in the long term. So why you got them healthy? I think you got to go out and you got to try, you know. And, again, like I said, if the man is who – if the man, as in Victor Wimbiana, is who we think he is, I don't understand – why this isn't a basketball team that can't be a playing team and why he himself can't win defensive player of the year and why he himself can't be an MVP talks for this season. Um, I don't understand why. Again, like I said, when I look at this team, I don't think they're bad. I think they have been doing everything they possibly can to lose basketball games. But um, I'm not going to spend too long today, but a couple other teams I really want to talk about and just teams that I'm really um, excited about. Um, one team is the Memphis Grizzlies. You know, I saw the highlights from what Ja was doing. Um, I think that for Ja, I think that, you know, kind of basically what, what well, a lot he put himself through these things. Um, it wasn't like, you know, the world was picking on him. No, Ja was doing that to himself. Obviously, you can't help the fact that you tore your shoulder up, but some of the other antics, that was Ja doing it to himself. So I'm not going to say what he's been through. I will say the things that he has largely subjected himself to i hope that he came back with a different appreciation for the game after basically taking pretty much what a year off basketball um because man when a man's on the court the man's incredible um and again i think this memphis grizzlies team i think that last year even though even though it was a down year i think that that could be kind of like the year that they needed to springboard them to something else right because i think that you know one thing that does happen when your star goes down is everybody else has to uh, put more of the burden on themselves. So I think, you know, having Desmond Bain have the season he had last year where, like, you know, you have a lot more offensive responsibility. Um, I don't think that every I, – I, I think that in other years in the playoffs, things ran too much through Ja, ja because maybe either guys didn't feel empowered or maybe they didn't have um, the skill level at that point in time to create their own shots in the uh, half court. I don't think that's the issue now. I think that, you know, you got Desmond Bain who can um, create something. You know, you have Jaron Jackson who also – I think average. I don't know what he. I think it was, I think he gave you about twenty points last year. I'm not mistaken. Um, but just guys that had to have more of a scoring burden on them because Ja wasn't there. And last year, Jaron gave you twenty two points. Um, what did what did uh, um, Desmond Bain give you last year? Desmond Bain gave you twenty three points, right? So you have guys, even like a Gigi Jackson, like right. So you like have guys who uh, felt empowered and got a chance to play 
and ha had more responsibility with the ball than what they would have had. And I think that could bode well for them in the future. And also, I'm excited to see uh, what Marcus Smart could bring to that team. You know, I think Marcus Smart can. This is a spot where he can, you know, kind of revigorate his career. Um, not to say his career was in the dumps or anything like that, but I feel like he kind of got like casted away from Boston. I think this is a place where, you know, he can revigorate his career and um, they can use his energy. Also, I think that he can help. Granted, I don't think he's, you know, uh, I, I don't, I wouldn't consider the man a point guard, but I do think he can initiate offense to a certain, to a certain level. So I think it, you know, gives job the, the opportunity to have more off ball opportunities and don't, and not have as much on him. Um, or even just look to score more and not have to look to set everything up and score. And again, I'm interested in, um, I haven't got a chance to watch Memphis yet. Um, I'm sure at some point in time this year, Memphis will be one of my lead pass teams, but I haven't got a chance to watch Memphis yet. But I'm interested to see what Zach Eady can bring to this team. One, because you, Lord knows Jaron Jackson don't want to rebound. Jaron Jackson will go block some shots. He'll go score some points, shoot some threes. But it's like the man is allergic to rebounding. So you got a guy there who's 7'4". Um, I felt like that was one of the main things they were missing once Steven Adams went down. Um, was just like a presence, a guy who could rebound, a guy who could set screens, just you know, a big body, just somebody um who just a presence inside. Obviously, Zach Eady, seven three, however many pounds he is, three hundred pounds, something like that. Just even you know the screens that he could set for guys, just being a presence on the boards, going out there and getting ten boards. Because again, Jaron not gonna do it, so going out there and getting ten boards and being a presence down low is something that um I think that they missed. Like I said, ever since Steven Adams went down. So I'm excited to see uh, what he can bring to this team this season. Another team um, that I'm excited about is the Indiana Pacers. Um, I don't think the Pacers making the conference finals last year was any kind of fluke. Um, dare I say they could go back again. Um, you know, if Halliburton can continue to improve, and also they did that without Benedict Mathurin, who I think is a guy who is a damn good basketball player. You know, that's that's Benedict Mathurin is about what I want to say, probably if I had to give it to him, 18 points a game. That's 18 points a game that they were missing last year that they didn't have. Um, so and again, another year with Siakam, Rick Carlisle, obviously good coach. I have no questions about Rick Carlisle's coach, championship coach, not just a good coach, championship coach. Um so, again, like, I think that this is a team that I'm very, very excited about. Oh, prayers up to James Wiseman. I know James Wiseman tore his Achilles, which sucks for him because I think that, you know, him being in his offense and, you know, playing with Halliburton could have been a, a really good place for him to um, revitalize his career um, and also just be on the stage, man. Like, obviously, you were in Detroit. Well, after the, after you got casted away from Golden State, you were in Detroit, which Detroit isn't winning many games. Like, you're not on TV a lot. You're not in the uh, spotlight. Um, but with Indiana, you'll be in the spotlight. You'll probably be in the playoffs. So prayers up to him for tearing his Achilles, man. Hope you come back strong. Hope you come back better than ever. But, yeah, man, this is a team I'm really excited about. Uh, like I said, second year with um, Siakam. I'm interested to see how that goes. Uh, they locked him up, which is what I think if you're in Indiana, you, 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 know, you have to do. And I think that the Pacers could be setting themselves up for – a really good era um, of, of Pacers basketball in Indiana. And like I said, I wouldn't be shocked um, if this team did do a thing like, you know, go back to the Eastern Conference Finals, I wouldn't be shocked. Moving on, the Philadelphia 76ers. I really don't even want to talk about this team because I don't think they're like an actual basketball team. Um, Joel Embiid doesn't want to play back-to-backs. He's getting investigated by the league. They got shellacked yesterday. I mean, I guess the one the positive is Tyrese Maxey looks good. Um, but I don't think the Philadelphia 76ers are a real basketball team. We already starting off in beat hurt and PG hurt and B time. Like he don't, like I say, he don't, he don't never want to play back to backs. I don't really have faith in what the Sixers can do. Um, so I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't really know when it comes to the Sixers. Um, Paul George left Kawhi to go play with, I don't want to say another version of Kawhi, but another injury prone guy. Um, who again said he doesn't he said he said I don't see myself playing back to backs for the rest of my career bro what are we doing yo again if your body hurt you can't move all due respect I feel you heal up get rest but you said I don't foresee myself doing that for the rest of my career which sounds insane to me but whatever it is what it is um the Dallas Mavericks the Mavericks play the Spurs tonight uh, tonight being again, I'm recording this Thursday. You'll see it Friday. Uh, so I'm interested to see what they look like. Obviously, you know, bringing in Clay Thompson again. Like I said, Clay Thompson, 
you know, he isn't what he once was. He isn't the uh, defender he once was. His uh, lateral quickness isn't what it once was. But the man can still shoot the basketball. You know, I know people act like he just fell off a cliff last year. Last year, but I think he still shot like thirty eight percent from three. He's still one of the better shooters um, in the NBA. And I think that having him next to Luca and next to Kyrie, and also, um, I hope Luca just knows what it takes to get it done now. You know, you've been to a conference finals, you've been to a final, you've been to an actual NBA finals and the way they got beat, handedly beat. Um, I think that, you know, now he knows what needs to be done. You also out there with Kyrie, another year of Kyrie. Kyrie feels more and more comfortable. Um, I think the end, another year of Lively, Lively year two, um, who I think is a really, really quality big. P.J. Washington, Daniel Gafford, all these guys who have been in your system now for a year as opposed to coming over you know, in the middle of the season, even though I think losing Derry Jones Jr. could be a thing because for whatever reason, the man turned into fucking Scottie Pippen and learned how to shoot midway through the playoffs. Um, but, yeah, I think the Mavericks can be a team that can really uh, do some damage. And I have the Mavericks, like, in the regular season, won the Western Conference. I wouldn't pick them to do it. I would still probably pick OKC okay, if I had to pick anybody just because on paper I think that they probably had the best team, and also I think they have the best chance at just staying healthy throughout the season just because all the guys are young, and I don't think they really have any, like, for real injury-prone guys, for real. I know Chad Holmgren missed his first year, but last year is pretty healthy. Shea doesn't really do anything to get hurt. Jalen Williams, Caruso, like, I think that on paper they'll probably win the conference, but but my second pick to win the conference would probably be a team like um, the Dallas Mavericks, so I'm excited to see what they can do this season. Um and, yeah, man, like I said, I think it should be a really, really exciting NBA season. I'm going to be here with you um, all year. Like I said, we're going to do this show on, on – I'm going to do this show on Thursday. You will always see it on Fridays. Um, Hoops and Brews, we might pop in here and there and do some things as well. Uh, shout out to Homie Joe. Shout out TPJ. Um, and also me musically, man. I, I got, you know, um, new music coming as well. Um, if you also, if you guys like the courtesy of the Baxter pod, um, I will be bringing that back and we'll be doing some things. I also have some other ideas of things I want to put in motion, but you know, I just wanted to come online and, um, you know, give you guys something today. Uh, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and you know, we're going to be here all year, man. So, and then again, this is recorded on Thursday. You all, you will always give me recording these on Thursdays and you will see them on Friday. So if I'm saying something and it happens later, it's cause I recorded the day before. But, uh, yeah, man, appreciate all you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We're going to be here all year. Uh,